Hey guys, Jack Coach here. Thought some of you might like to see how I tie the infamous scale of the Conqueror. Here she is in all of her beauty. It's not the one fly to catch all fish, but it's one of those flies that there's something a little bit weird about it, in a good way. It's one of those flies that you might put on when you've been fishing to a fish for a few fly changes and it's sort of gone a little bit still. It's heavy, it'll get down quick, it's got a bit of movement with the rubber legs in the uh, dubbing but more importantly it's different and I think that's something that can quite often be overlooked in fly tying I mean particularly in these heavily pressured places people are throwing the same flies at fish every day really and whilst the herring cop will catch 95% of your fish I think sometimes having something which is just a little bit weird which makes the trout go hmm that could be something interesting I think that can be a really valuable thing. So I'll show you guys how to tie it. Like I said, it's a little bit weird and it's very purple. So we start off with a reasonably big hook. Here at the moment I've got a TMC 2457 size 10. We've got a 2.5mm gold bead at the front and a 3.5mm behind it and just some lead wraps just to hold them in place and keep them centred. So we're using olive 70 denier Danville's thread but anything like your uni thread and that will do just fine get a couple of wraps in there take off the excess the Gaylord does not have a particularly complicated materials list it consists primarily of purple jelly body and purple dubbing so to start off with we're going to tie on the tail now one thing I found to be really important when tying Gaylords or anything with a ribbed jelly body body is to get your thread wraps and your body material to be very neat through the body because any little bump or anything is just going to throw your thread wraps off and so you can have gaps in your thread in your, sorry in your um, jelly body wraps and that can be a real pain in the ass because it just doesn't look as good does it so we'll catch it in up the top up here and then start tying it down. Now we want to have touching turns of thread. Pull your um, jelly body tight just to make it as thin as possible and that just makes it a little bit easier to tie down. It's worth taking a little bit of extra time and getting this step right because it does make quite a big difference in the final look of the fly. And tie it down to say about there. Right, now I'm just going to work the way back up and just cover any little lumps, anything like that. And tie this back up to about there. A couple of turns and then we're just going to cut it off. Tie it down the excess of your thread. And then trim your tail, get it nice and neat. Right, now we're going to tie another lot of jelly body straight down the back of the hook. And this is going to be what we rib up for our body. So catch it in up there. And again, you could tie this on your way back up if you've made a very good um, neat pass over with your, when you're tying in your tail. But I find it quite useful to pull the jelly body tight when you're tying it down. So I like to come back up to the top to do it. So pull it tight and that just stretches it out and then touching turns down the back of the fly like I said earlier it's worth getting this step right because it can, if you do get lumps in it, it can be a real pain in the ass and it just doesn't look that good almost there tie that down to where your tail where you tighten your tail once you get there, then come back up. Just cover any little lumps and bumps and whatnot, but we're looking all right here. Okay, now plain and simple, just start wrapping it around. If you've tied a nice, neat body, it should come up quite clean. If you haven't, then you can get little gaps in your jelly body and it just doesn't look that smart. 
but I think we're going to be alright here. If it does, if you do get a little gap, sometimes if you just squish it down with your thumb and then make another wrap, or with your nail, sorry, just squish it down like that, push it backwards, and then make another wrap that can hold it in place, but I don't think we're going to have too many problems with this guy. So tie it up to about here, and then we're good to tie it off. So a few wraps there. Then give it a snip. Cool. Just tidy up your loose ends there. Right, now we're going to tie in our purple jelly body legs. What else? And so how I like to do it is just to catch... Have your thread hanging there. Lift up your jelly body there. I don't know how well you guys can see that. So if you have your thread hanging there, pinch your jelly body on the other side of it, lift it up like that, slide it down to where you want it, and then catch it in. And that's looking about right there. Okay. A few thread reps just to hold it in place, and then give it a snip. And repeat the process on the other side. Okay. Get them about the same length there. And then just more wraps just to hold it in place. Okay, almost done there. Right, and then cut that bit off as well. Now you can tidy up the length of your legs and that sort of thing at the end, so don't worry if they're not too, um, if they're not all precise at the moment. Okay, now for the final step, we have our purple ice stub. Take a decent bit of that, and build yourself a little dubbing noodle on the thread. Okay. Slide it up and just start dubbing over the legs, covering any gaps or any thread and that sort of thing. Just tidy that bit up there. A couple over there and a couple, maybe one in front of the legs if you can get one in there. That just helps it offset the legs quite nicely. Now we're ready to whip finish. Nice and simple. Pull everything out of the way three turns hopefully it disappears in there under the dubbing between the bead and I like to do it twice just for a bit of security three and we're done there and that guys is the infamous Gaylord the Conqueror in all its glory now if you need to straighten up the legs anything like that what I like to do is just get them pinch them all up so they're like that and then just cut straight across it and that'll just mean it make everything the same length and with the legs they can be a bit fiddly at first but if you have a play around um, then you'll actually get your work out how to do it and how to get them sitting right it's really just a matter of having a fiddle and then should come out good so cool have a go um, like I said earlier it's not going to be the one fly that catches all of your fish but it's something quite fun to have in your box and people always you know if you show your box to people they're always going to be like what on earth is that? And that's enough of a reason to have it in there for me. Cool guys, cheers.